All right, gang, here we go. This is for physics, unit eight, part six, talking about lenses. All right, so last video we talked about Snell's law and we talked about how when light passes through different mediums, it actually speeds up or slows down as it crosses that boundary. And when that happens, it refracts, okay? So before, when we talked about mirrors, we talked about reflection, and how light bounces off of things to end up somewhere else. And then, uh, but with refraction, our light actually bends. And this gives us that, you know, that optical illusion that like if you stick a pencil in water, it looks like it broke, okay? Um, so we're gonna talk about that and we're going to specifically use uh, talk about how we can use this refraction in order to come up with some useful things here uh, and we'll talk about in the next video we'll talk about those practical applications like telescopes and glasses and even your eyeballs and stuff like that on how lenses work but for now we're just generally talking about well, how do lenses work all right so just to warm up here let's talk about refraction real quick all right, so if this light comes in, and imagine it's traveling through air and it hits this thing here that's made out of glass, we know that light will slow down when it comes and hits this surface. When it crosses this boundary, it's, it's going to slow down. And so as it slows down, we know that when uh, light slows, okay, it bends, uh, bends towards the normal, okay, towards the normal, all right. And then if it speeds up, all right, speeds up then it bends uh, away okay from the normal all right so let's just remind ourselves now what is the normal well remember the normal is the um, the line that's perpendicular to our surface here so if this is our surface and we want to draw a line that's perpendicular to it it would be at a 90 degree angle here so it'd be you know this would be our 90 degree angle something like that and so our normal would look something like this Okay. And this is where we're going to see how good I am at drawing straight lines on a PowerPoint presentation. But anyway, so here's our normal. Okay, And so, uh, so our light is going to, because it's going into glass, it's going to uh, slow down. Okay, And so it's going to bend towards the normal. All right? So this is the normal line. It, normally, it would want to come straight out like this. right? But because this normal line is here, or, or because it's slowing down, it's going to bend towards the normal. All right? So let's erase this normal here because I obviously didn't put it right on there but we know it's going to bend towards the normal and the normal is going to be like that so because it bends towards the normal it's going to come out something like this it's going to be bent this way okay all right that makes sense because uh, the normal is like this and so it's going to bend instead of going straight across it's going to bend towards the normal it's going to bend down now as it crosses through the other side of this okay uh, our normal on this side is going to be the opposite right the normal is going to look this is going to be our 90 degree to this guy so our normal is going to look something like this right so there's that guy all right um, and it's opposite because these two guys are uh, have different slopes all right so then but as it goes from glass to air again it's going to speed up right and it says it bends away from the normal when it speeds up so away from the normal would be down here right would be down here and so our our ray as it comes out of this is going to be bent down there and it's going to come out as a straight line like this okay uh not a curvy line it doesn't <laughs> but whatever and so then this guy here as it comes through the lens uh it, since it's coming right at a 90 degree angle like that this one doesn't get bent at all it's just going to go straight across so it's going to go like that all right and then this one here and you savvy physicists should notice that this one well it's the exact mirror of this side so it should do the exact same thing right so it'll, it'll you know get bent up here and then it'll get bent up here and then like that and we can see that we get this point right here where all of our rays are uh, getting bent as they pass through this set of glass it's going to get bent towards this spot right here and so we would describe this thing as a converging lens because it converges all of our rays that come through it to one point and we define this point as the focal point okay so it's the focal point of our lens all right so uh, we define our lens as a transparent object that converges or diverges light by refraction. All right, so these lights, come, this light comes in, and if it comes in parallel, it's going to hit this guy and it's going to bend down. All right, uh, so this is a converging lens, and if you look closely, it's kind of faint, but you can see uh, that we get this shape that kind of looks like this, it's, you know, like what we just looked at. Okay, um, and then a diverging lens. 
all right, is the does the opposite when it comes in instead of uh, sending it towards a spe specific point, it sends it away from a specific point. So this would be your focal point over here. Notice that our light rays come in this way, and then they got divi diverged up and away from this point. All right, and so that's a, this is called a diverging lens. So diverging lens are thinner in the middle than they are at the ends, and converging lenses are thicker in the middle. All right. Now, from what we just did, we know that light bends at each surface. Every time it goes changes medium, it's going to bend at each surface. All right. But because we're defining these as thin lenses, all right. So, and it's just kind of this generic term of making our lives easier. We're going to assume that uh, we're going to just make the assumption or the uh, the, uh, we're going to sneezing tree our way out of this and assume that this light only bends at the middle. All right, And so we only have to draw it at that one point. So that makes our life a lot easier instead of bending, showing it at each surface. It's just going to bend at the middle towards the or away from the focal point. All right, uh, The focal length okay, is the distance from the focal point. So the focal point here is our big capital F, and then our focal length is that distance. We also have the other point that's uh, really important is called 2F, so that's the distance of, of uh, that's our 2F would be two focal lengths away from lens, all right? Two focal lengths away, all right, from our lens, all right? So we have to be able to draw ray diagrams for lenses, and this is going to where we're going to spend the majority of the video here is drawing a bunch of these ray diagrams. All right, I'm going to do my best to draw one of them here on PowerPoint, but no promises. It might look like crud when we're all said and done. Now, the way that the, these ray diagrams rules work is uh, there's three rays you're going to draw, ray 1, ray 2, and ray 3, your parallel ray, your central ray, and your focal ray. All right. From your object to your lens, you'll always draw them like this. Your parallel ray will be parallel to the principal axis. That's that black line in the middle. Uh, the central ray will always travel straight to the center of the lens, and the focal ray will always pass through the focal point. All right, so that doesn't matter if you're drawing it for a converging lens or a diverging lens. Now, it gets more exciting. You have to choose between your rules depending on if you have a converging lens all right, or a diverging lens. Okay, so a converging lens follows these three rules, right? And a diverging lens follows these three rules. Okay, so here we've got a converging lens, and we're going to try to draw our ray diagrams here. No promises. All right, so parallel ray, parallel it goes parallel to the principal axis. So we're going to draw it from this point right here. All right. So here's our parallel ray, and it's going to go parallel to the principal axis. So that means it's just going to go straight across until it hits our lens. All right, so it's going to go straight across like so. Until it hits our lens, all right. It's not too bad, all right. And then, and then after we go to the parallel principal axis, because we have a converging lens, it's going to pass through the focal point. So that means it's going to go from here down to this focal point right here, all right. And then it's going to just keep going like that. Ah, that's not the worst thing I've ever drawn, all right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, now the central ray here. Let's change colors so it's a little bit easier to see. Ooh, let's do uh, not white. That was a misclick. Let's do uh, this nice blue. Okay, so the blue central ray goes to the central center of the lens. So we're going to stop here, start here at the top of the pencil, and then it's going to go to the center of the lens. And then it says from there, uh, because it's a central converging lens, it's going to keep going from the center of the lens. So essentially, this guy is just going to be one long line that goes from here all the way through the center, all the way out again. All right, so it's going to go like, like this. Or something like that. All right. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and then the third one is the focal ray. All right. So we're going to go, we're going to change our ink color. All right. And we're going to go, I don't know, what should we do? Should we do purple? All right. Uh, focal ray passes through the focal point F and then it travels parallel to the principal axis. So it's going to go from the tip here, all right, down to the focal point right here. All right, and then until it hits the mirror somewhere down here. All right, so we're going to do that. All right, just kind of come down here. All right, hits that. Okay, and then from there, it's going to travel parallel to the principal axis. So, yeah, I told you I'd foul it up. These three things should have met at the same point. All right, it's probably the, I don't know, the red and the blue one are pretty bad. But anyway, so these three should line up. So, this is how you'd go, go about drawing this thing. So, it would look something like this. This is what we tried to just draw. Okay, so uh, parallel lens or parallel ray, okay, went straight across here and then bounced through the focal point. The central ray went straight through the center and kept going. 
all right and then the last one passed through the focal point hit this hit this and then went parallel and then ended up here at this pencil right here all right right there like that okay uh, so if our object so a set of what you need to do we're gonna flip through a bunch of these different ray diagrams and what I want you to be able to do is be able to draw or at least describe where the object and the image are okay and then what it what kind of image it makes so if our object is outside of 2f so that means it's beyond our 2f point it's going to produce a real image so that means it can be projected okay and it's smaller and it's going to going to appear between f and 2f okay uh, so this is really like this is an example of how the human eyeball works like your lens and your your eye there's a little lens that gets stretched and grown based on your your ocular muscles that are in there and it uh, projects that image at different points all right, and so uh, if the object is outside of 2f, it gets in, in, put in your, it gets projected onto the back of your eye, and your uh, your little, you know, your optic nerve and stuff, and your rods and your cones pick it up, and then you transmit it to your brain, and your brain flips the signal over because the way it sees it directly in your eyes, it's upside down. Pretty bizarre. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next one here is if our object is right at 2f. Okay. Notice we've got the same three rays one parallel bounces through f one through the center keeps going and one through f down and then parallel all right it forms the image right at 2f okay and it's the exact same size okay uh, if our you know and pause at any point so you can write uh, draw in these guys on your own i suggest using a ruler and doing it on powerpoint's pretty tr pretty tough okay uh, and then this next one is if our object is between 2f and f all right, um, then our, you know, we've got our three rays again, parallel, bounces off F, through the center, and then through focal point, and then parallel again, okay? Uh, then our image gets applied, or it gets, is beyond 2F, okay, is magnified, all right? Notice how it's bigger. The object and the image are, you know, the object is smaller than the image. So this is the exact opposite of what we just did uh, for the first one we drew. And that makes sense, right? And that makes sense because, um, we know that image or rays uh, can go either way. We learned that in the last um, video, right? Is that our rays can be inverted? They can they can go forwards or backwards, all right. The this next guy here, if our fo if our object is right at the focal point, okay, is right here at the focal point, then uh, our rays when they come out here, they bounce, they go parallel, and then they bounce through the focal point, and then they go through the center and keep going, and then these two rays are parallel to one another, and because they're parallel to one another, uh, we they will not form an image. Okay, so if we, uh, you know, this this is exactly how we do it for lenses that are use that just try to shine light to make things really bright. So spotlights also place the light bulb right at the focal point. So when you shine it, it doesn't actually make the image of the light bulb. It just makes like uh, this big blurry bright spot. Okay, so that's how you know lighthouses and searchlights and stuff like that work. All right. And then finally, this one is the most complicated one here, is if our image or our object is between the focal point and the lens, then we get a virtual image. So notice this is the only time we've had a virtual image, okay, is if we're beyond the focal point. All right, so that it's virtual, it's on the same side, and it's magnified and upright. Notice that you should have noticed by now that all virtual images are uh, upright and all real images are upside down. All right, and so this is really how magnifying glasses work, the lenses of microscopes, binoculars, this is how all of those work, all right, making them bigger, all right. <clears throat> um, so diverging lenses, also fairly complicated. Notice that we follow the same three rules, okay, but the image gets uh, gets projected, and it's real and inverted, so it actually gets small, or it gets, it's virtual and smaller, all right, virtual and smaller. Okay, and so this, uh, so we've got our three rays, right? This ray comes out here, bounces off, it's parallel, bounces off our, our thing, and then, but it bounced off, instead of passing through the focal point here, it, it acts as if it came from the focal point on this end, all right? And the second one uh, passes through the center and just keeps on going, just like we're used to. And then the third one passes through the mirror as if it was going to go through the focal point, but actually gets bounced off parallel. All right, so it's the same three three rules in essence, but slightly different. So in order to draw one like this, you'd have to follow that third column right here. All right. All right. <clears throat>
Now, we also have to do, be able to do some math with these guys. So we got these two different equations. We've got the thin lens equation and the magnification equation. These should look very, very familiar. These are exactly the same type or the exact same equ uh, equations that we used back uh, with when we did mirrors, right? So the P is our distance from the object to the lens. Our Q is the distance from the image to the lens. And uh, F is our focal length. Right. Magnification, H prime is the image height, H is the object height, Q is the, you know, and then it's negative Q over P distance, image distance and object distance. All right. Now, the, the way these guys differ a little bit is the conventions. Like, um, so we're going to have different conventions, meaning we're going to have different signs, either positive or negative values, depending on the location and, uh, the sh you know, whether or not our object is inverted or, or our image and object are inverted. Okay, so these you need to memorize, and these these can be kind of confusing. The best way to do them is really pay attention uh, and and do practice problems. Okay, so p is the po p. So this is our object distance, right? Is positive if the object is in front, right? P is positive if the object is in front. Okay, so if our object is to the left of the mirror, our p is positive. Now our q is opposite of that. Our q is positive if the image is behind. Okay. So if the image is behind the mirror, so that means so that's like all of our conver you know uh, converging lens converging lenses. If our object is over here, it's going to be positive, and if our image, well, I guess it would be inverted, right? If our image was inverted, uh, it would be uh, positive when it's over here. All right. If our image, so those ones where we formed a virtual image and it formed on the front, it would have a negative Q. Okay. So like this. So if Q is negative, the image is in front of the lens. So this would be virtual. Okay, so anytime you have a positive or you have a real image, you know you're going to have a positive Q. All right. Now F is positive for a converging lens and negative for a div diverging lens. And then finally, our H and H prime are positive if upright and negative if inverted. All right, positive upright and negative if inverted. All right, so let's do some practice problems. Oh. Yeah, so let's do some practice problems here. It says, when an object is placed three centimeters in front of a converging lens, a real image is formed six centimeters in the back of the lens. Find the focal length. So we're going to have this equation, 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 over F. And it says, find the focal distance. So that means we're solving for the F. So we can rearrange this. Uh, we'll just rewrite it the other way. And we're going to flip it upside down. So F is equal to 1 over P plus 1 over Q uh, to the negative 1. Okay, so now we're plugging these guys in. So, and we have to think about our signs because they're not going to tell us the signs in the problem. In the problem, we have to think about their location and our conventions. All right. So, uh, the image distance or the object distance, excuse me, is three centimeters. So it'd be one over three point uh, zero zero. And we got to think about well, is this positive or negative? And it says it's in front. And remember, right here, it said that if our object is in front of the lens, it's positive. Okay, so it's a positive three. That's nice. All right, and then uh, we're going to do the one over Q. All right, so the Q is six centimeters, and it says it's in the back of the lens. All right, so back of the lens means it's also positive, so we're just going to leave it positive. All right, and then we're going to do it to the negative one. Okay, now to plug this into our calculator, remember the trick I showed you. All right, we're going to start with the parentheses here, and then we're going to do uh, three to the inverse plus six inverse to the inverse. All right, so let me. I'm going to try to do it and see if I can show you on the video here. Plus 6 inverse to the inverse. All right. So let's see if this pops up. It might not. My camera might not be good enough to pick up this. I don't know. Can you see how I use my inverse buttons here? Okay. So it looked like that. Notice that it spat out two for us. Okay. <clears throat> so the, uh, the focal length would be 2.00 centimeters. Okay which is exactly what I got. Well done, gang. All right, it says, where would you place an object in order to produce a virtual image 15 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters? And then it says, how about a diverging lens with the same focal length? All right, so we're going to solve this guy twice, once with a converging lens and once with a um, diverging lens. All right, so we're, gonna, we're solving for the object placement. So that's our p value. So if we take the same equation here and we solve for p, we know that our p value would be equal to uh, 1 over f minus 1 over q inverse. All right. So for a converging lens, for a converging lens, all right, our p value 
would be equal to 1 over our f value. So our f value is 10 centimeters. Converging lens have a positive focal length. So we'll just plug in that 10, all right, 10 centimeters. And then we have 1 over our q value. All right? And it says the virtual image is in front of the converging lens. So that means it's going to be a negative 15. All right? So we'll plug that into our calculator. So we get uh, 10 inverse minus negative 15 inverse, right, and then inverse of our answer, and we got, and I got 6.00 centimeters, all right, so if we put our object at 6 centimeters, then uh, we would get our virtual image uh, at 15 centimeters, and that makes sense because that would be in front of the focal point, which is exactly where we'd expect it, all right, and then for a diverging lens, for the diverging lens, we'd have um, our p-value here would be equal to uh, 1 over, well, it's a diverging, so it would be a negative 10, all right, minus 1 over, and again, our image is still in front, so it would be negative 15, all right, so we'd get 10 inverse minus negative 15 inverse, inverse the whole thing. Oh, I, you know, it only works if you plug it in right. All right, and I got negative 30 centimeters, 0 0.0 centimeters. All right, so what that negative means that in order to form this image with a diverging lens in the needed spot, we'd have to place our object 30 centimeters behind the image. All right, so that's about it for the for this section here. It's not too bad. Drawing those ray diagrams can be kind of tricky, and learning these sign conventions can be kind of tricky. So make sure you do your practice problems. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions if you get confused. Uh, let me know if you uh, have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.